I'm Marina Pacini, and I'm the chief curator at the Memphis Brooks Museum of Art. That means that I'm involved with the selection of the exhibitions that go up on view. I work with a permanent collection and also help make decisions about what works are acquired for the museum's collection. I don't think I ever really thought about it in quite these terms, but over the years I've come to realize that being a curator is actually very creative. Exhibitions look entirely different depending on where they're installed. What pictures that you put next to other pictures can completely change the way an exhibition looks. So there is a lot that gets decided upon when, you, when an exhibition arrives as to how you're going to install it at your particular institution. Wall color can make a tremendous difference in what a painting looks like. It's a really tricky part of the process that you have to pay a lot of attention to. And it's part of the job, again, that I really, really enjoy doing. Each exhibit is different. Besides the fact that they're different artists and different subjects, they just have a different ethos, different personality, as it were. You, know, you get in our comment books people saying how much they like the installation. That's when you know you've done a really good job. Um, and that's just, entire, just completely satisfying. It's a really great thing. This is a special exhibition that's been organized uh, from the museum's permanent collection. We were fortunate enough to acquire photographs from the Memphis World, an African-American newspaper published here in Memphis. Most people were unfamiliar with what was happening in African-American communities because the newspapers of the time were not covering it. It's not just images having to do with the civil rights movement, it's about full and complex lives that African Americans were leading in Memphis. What's remarkable about these photographs is they were not taken as um, you know, art objects, they were journalism. So you've got crop marks, you've got folds and tears and staple marks. It includes another 30 photographs by Ernest Withers, there are 14 other photographers, and it's um, a real pleasure to have work by these other photographers. One of the things that's been really rewarding about this exhibition is the members of the community coming to see the exhibit and seeing themselves and their families and friends uh, pictured on the walls of the exhibit. I'm very excited about the Baroque world of Fernando Botero. I mean, the fact that he's a Colombian artist and I'm half Colombian has something to do with it. They're extraordinary works of art. You can appreciate them just, you know, physically for their artistic beauty. He's an amazing painter. His use of color, the way that he paints those canvases, the subject matter, they're funny, witty. He deals with violence you know, issues of power and politics. One of the things I like about the exhibit is that it's very personal, but Columbia comes through throughout the exhibition in lots of ways. And not only are his figures um, extravagantly rounded, but the canvases themselves and the sculptures are enormous. You're getting an awful lot of art with this exhibition. This is a great example of the wonderful sense of humor that Botero had. Not only does the uh, pear have a worm in it, but the worm has a smiley face on it. Great sense of humor with that little bite mark taken out of it. All of a sudden, after you've taken a nibble, you discover the fact that it's got a worm in it. And works like this where, I mean, the idea that somebody could take marble and make it look as if it were liquid. I mean, the way that that fabric pours over the size of the, um, of that table is just extraordinary. They're so fabulous. Really what it is is an exploration of all the joyous parts of life in Latin America. So you've got dancing and musicians, religion, you've got picnics, all sorts of different things that sort of give you a sense of the flavor of life in Latin America. And this is something that, that we get a lot in our comment books with visitors saying how grateful they are to the museum for bringing the world to Memphis, exposing them to things that they would otherwise not have an opportunity to see. You know, a lot of um, visitors may be familiar with some of the works that we have on view, either in the permanent collection or that come through exhibitions. 
from having seen them reproduced in books. But that doesn't in any way do away with the need to come and see the object in person. There is nothing like it. To stand in front of something like that, that is so much larger than you are, it changes your experience you know, of yourself, of the environment around you, um, and that's something you're never going to get sitting in front of a book or on a computer. The process of choosing exhibitions and installing them, it can take anywhere from three to five years. And what happens is museums send out proposals. The director and the associate curator and I sit down and look at the exhibits and try to find things that make sense for Memphis. We look at the exhibition schedule over a three to five year period and try to balance it out so that we've got you know, contemporary classical works of art, sculpture and painting. You know, try to spread things out so that we appeal to the broadest audience possible. We'll pull together the rest of the staff, the development staff, do they think they can fund the exhibition? The marketing staff, do they think that they're going to be able to attract the community and get them in to see it? The education department, will they be able to develop programs that are going to interest the community? Will it work for school groups? You know, who exactly is the audience going to be for this exhibition? So a lot of conversation happens before we even decide to sign a contract and take it. Once it's in um, the, the schedule, Usually about a year, year and a half out, the planning begins in terms of finding the funders for the special exhibition, the planning, the installation process, the wall colors, the discussion of the design. Also with the marketing department, we really like to try to work with them so that there's a unified campaign for the exhibition. Basically, the whole institution is involved in making these things happen. These days, even the Brushmark restaurant, they try to come up with menus that come along with these special exhibitions. Andrew uh, has gotten really excited about this exhibition and has designed a menu around the fact that we've got an exhibition of work by a Colombian artist. He's making sancocho, he's got arepas, empanadas, lots of typical uh, Colombian cuisine. 